Quest for the Hidden City by George Mann is out today. It's the first middle grade book in Phase 2 of The High Republic, set 150 years before Phase 1. It's also the second book to be released overall in Phase 2 after the young adult novel Path of Deceit. It's about a Republic Pathfinder team investigating the disappearance of their colleagues on the supposedly haunted planet Gloam. Learning about the Pathfinders was one of my favorite aspects of the book, seeing how the Republic went about expanding its borders by sending out Jedi and hyperspace prospectors and communications technicians and droids. It's a fun addition to the Star Wars universe that sets the stage for Phase 2. In my review for Path of Deceit, I said I wished we got a little more context of the state of the galaxy at this point in the time timeline, and Quest for the Hidden City gave me the basics of what I was looking for. These groups slowly and as safely as possible explore new hyperspace lanes, find new planets and species, and offer their assistance first and foremost. There are no expectations that these planets will then join the Republic, but it is the hope. It's a very Jedi thing to do, give with no thought of reward, but I like seeing the Pathfinders, who are not Force-sensitive, acting with that same attitude. All they want to do is help, and if any new planets want to join the Republic and in turn help even more planets, then that's great too. It's great to see the Republic like this. The government is supposed to be at its height right now, not just in power, but idealism. The fact that they are going out of their way to help any planets that need it is so refreshing to see. They're not only concerned with their own planets. They'll offer assistance to anyone who needs it. It's presented as completely selfless, and it's cool to see the Republic and the Jedi so in sync. The Jedi Pathfinders come across a species called the Catacoot, on the planet Albados, and they're in the middle of an energy crisis. They've been mining a resource on a nearby planet called Gloam, but the mines are running dry, and several people recently went missing there, including two Jedi and their Pathfinder teams. The Catacoot are interesting. They're a bat-like species with wings, but they can't fly. They've got a more advanced civilization than most frontier planets the Jedi have ever seen, but we see many times that their technological progress comes at a price. For example, I think it's interesting that they have all lost their ability to use their wings. Like, they developed hovering technology, so why do they need to fly on their own? Like, their technological advancement caused them to lose a part of who they were. Gloam is another cautionary tale of progress at any cost. The planet at one point seemed to be as hospitable as Albados, but overmining led to destruction and desolation. Maybe it's because the Rings of Power so recently came out, but the discussions of progress knocking the natural order out of balance felt very Tolkien to me. Like the dwarves of Moria, the Catacoot delved too greedily and too deep, and they awakened monsters. Not just real ones, but some within themselves. The High Republic has always leaned a little more into the fantasy inspirations of Star Wars, and I maybe felt that the most in Quest for the Hidden City. The Jedi characters reflect some more fantastical elements as well. The new Jedi Master, Salandra Sho, wields not just a lightsaber, but also a shield that I think is powered by kyber crystals, like a light shield. It reflects beliefs that the Jedi should be a shield to those in need first and foremost, and that they should reach for their lightsabers second. Her Padawan, Ruper Natani, continues the trend of showing us that the Jedi of this era see the Force in unique ways. She sees it through shades of color, which is very cool when written on the page. I like the descriptions of her experiences. What I like even more is seeing that Salandra doesn't understand her Padawan's interpretation of the Force, but there is no judgment from that. Just acceptance, respect, and a desire to learn and then help Ruper excel. Quest for the Hidden City and Path of Deceit both had great master-Padawan relationships. And similar to Path of Deceit, Quest continued to tease out some information about the Nameless, their origins, and other mysteries that were set up in the Phase 1 books and comics. All in all, I would say Quest is comparable to the other middle-grade Star Wars books. Enjoyable enough. They're not my favorites, but that's because they're all written for someone a quarter of a century younger than I am. If I were back in my middle school days, I actually do think it's exactly the kind of book I would have loved. It actually reminded me a lot of this book, The Doomstone, I read back back then, a spooky, mythological setting with monsters. I also think Quest for the Hidden City might be a better entry point into the High Republic than Path of Deceit, just because it does a little more to set the stage of the entire galaxy. So if you've been considering giving the era a shot, I'd still say to just read Light of the Jedi first, but Quest is a shorter and easier read set even farther back if that's what interests you. 
Let me know what you thought of Quest for the Hidden City in the comments when you finish reading it for yourself. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel for all our High Republic coverage, follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.